So the Bible says Goliath, he came out every single day, twice a day, for 40 days, taunting the Israelites, telling them, who can come and fight with me? Come on, you know, boasting and insulting the God of Israel. Every single day, twice a day, for 40 days. This carried on. Now, Jesse sent his youngest son, David, to go and see how his brothers are doing at the war front, at the battle. David was too young. He was looking after the sheep. So he was, he, he was not called up by King Saul to come and fight. So David went. So he saw this man. He heard his jeers. He heard his taunts. And he was wondering that, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is uh, talking about our God in this way? So he, he asked, he said, what would the king do to the man who kills this giant? And he was told, the king is going to give him his daughter to marry. The king is going to give him lots of wealth. And his family will be exempt from paying taxes in Israel. So David heard this. And that was how, I'm not going to go into the full story. Because this is only about Michal, Saul's daughter. And that was how David defeated Goliath, killed him, cut off his head. David was promoted. So the king, he asked who this lad was and he kept him at his palace. He refused David to go back home to his dad. So David stayed in the palace. So I'm sure Jesse would have found another shepherd to look after the sheep. So anyway, um, Saul now promoted him into a high ranking position in the army, his army. And anywhere David went with his men, God gave him success because the Bible says God was with David. The Lord was with him. So he, was, he got success in everything he did, in everything he touched. So one time when he was coming back from battle, which he had won, he was victorious. The women came out and they started singing. Saul had killed his thousands, David his ten thousands. Now that was the beginning of the end. Well, not quite the end, but that was the beginning of Saul's envy, Saul's jealousy, and Saul's plan to kill David. He said to himself, now they are singing these songs about him. I have killed only a thousand. David has killed ten thousand. What's remaining now? What next? The only thing left for him to take now is my throne, is my crown. That's what he's going to go after. So the king wanted to kill David. You know, but God always saved David. You know, he, he always escaped from the king's plan. And then um, he decided that, okay, he's going to give David his daughter. Um, me, me, Bab, let me see. Mirab. Mirab. He will give him his daughter, Mirab. That's his first daughter. You know, the, the, what he was told was whoever killed Goliath will be given the king's daughter to marry. So he offered his first daughter, Mirab, to david you know thinking that david will be killed by the philistines i don't even need to touch him and um, so he told david that all he wants is for him to go out and fight the battles and win and that's it but david said and um, who is he in israel who is his family to marry the king's daughter to become the king's son-in-law so essentially what david was saying is he doesn't have a bright price to pay for the, the daughter because you have to pay a, a, a bride price. So the time when the king supposed to give David Mirab, he gave him to another man. So we don't know why the king changed his mind, but he gave him to another man instead. And later the king found out that his daughter Michal loves David. So the king thought, yes, this is now my opportunity to get rid of David once and for all. So he told men to whisper to David, yeah, the king likes you, the king wants you to, to be his son-in-law, the king wants you to marry Michal. So the king whispered and David heard it and um, he, he did wonder how he's going to pay the bride price. But uh, Saul told him that the only thing he wants is the foreskin of a hundred Philistines. That would be the bride price. Just go and bring a hundred foreskin because Saul was secretly hoping and wishing that while he went out to battle, he would be killed. And that would be the end of David. 
so david did not just only go out to get these hundred four skins he got 200 four skins of the philistines so you see he cut off the the tip of the penis and he brought that as his bride price you see what a gory bride price 200 instead of a hundred that Saul demanded so he married Michal, but still um saul was not pleased all he wants is for david to die that is too powerful and he's too famous everybody likes him david must die he has to die so he tells his men that uh, they should go in the morning to david's house where he's living with his daughter michael and kill him but michael warns um, david that if you sleep in this house tonight in the morning you'll be dead my dad wants you dead you'll be dead you see both jonathan and michael loved david their dad saul wanted him dead but they did not follow their dad they did their own thing because i've seen uh, people who when somebody is their enemy you automatically have to make them your enemy despite not having any problem any trouble with that person now here is the king and these are his children but they did not follow after their dad they did not hate david just because their dad hated david so she let david down through the window you know you remember rahab and the two spies let him down through the window david was able to escape so when david escaped in the morning the king saul ordered his men to go and bring david she told them that he was sick in bed he can't come and they went back to tell the king and Saul told them, bring him with the bed if you have to, and let me kill him. So when they went, they forced themselves into the room, and they saw that uh, Michael had deceived them. She put um, an idol in the bed with some goat hair. So when they removed the covers, it wasn't David, it was an idol. So Saul was furious with his daughter. You know, how dare you let, uh, allow my enemy to escape? I wanted to kill him. You let him flee. And Michael had to lie and said, no, he said, why should I kill you? If you don't let me go, I will kill you. And that's why I had to let him go. So David is now on the run for 13 odd years, 13, 14. He, he left his wife. There was no way of contacting her. If he did go back, Saul will kill him. That's for sure. So he's on the run. He's running away from Saul. He's hiding in caves. He's uh, hiding anywhere he has to. He has to uh, pretend that he's even mad at one point just to escape for his life. Things were not looking good for David. But finally, Saul dies and then David is made king so he can now come back to take his rightful position. So, um, however, before he comes back, he tells um, Abner that he wants his wife back, his wife Michal. He wants her back this time david has married six wives six wives but he still wants his wife michael back so they go and um saul had given her to another man you know she had waited 13 years it's a long time had given her to another man to marry saying this david of yours is well is as good as dead just forget about him so she's with another man uh, paul tiel i think his name is so they went to her husband's house and forcefully took Michael back that you need to come back to David. And her husband starts crying and weeping and following them all the way, saying, I want my wife, I love my wife. And Abner shouts at him, go back now. So he goes back home and they bring Michael back to David. So she now she's now one of David's wives. So, and then David decides to go and bring the ark back to Jerusalem. By the, this time, the ark was still at Kiriath Jirim, where when the Philistines captured the ark and they brought it back, it, the ark had been there. During the reign of Saul, he never went for the ark. He never thought about bringing the ark back to Jerusalem. But David thought, okay, he wants to bring the ark back. So when he was bringing the ark back to Jerusalem, he was dancing, leaping, he removed his clothes because they were... Uh, constricting him he was dancing before the Lord he was so happy you know I will dance as David danced he was just so happy he was dancing his wife Michael was looking at him from on top of the window and she despised him in her heart the Bible says 
that he's making a fool of himself and he calls himself a king and see the way he's dancing before all these maids and all his uh, subjects you know so she didn't like that at all but you know david was there praising his god happy that the ark was coming back to jerusalem to his rightful place and when she finally met david she told him off you call yourself a king don't you know how foolish you looked you made a fool of yourself even in front of your maids in front of the servants you carried on like that you even almost got naked what was wrong with you and david told her that i was dancing before the lord my god you know god who chose me over your father over your father's house it's before him i was dancing and rejoicing and worshiping you know so he, he said and those maids those servants that you said i made a fool of they will honor me they will respect me don't you worry and the bible says michael never had a child until she died now there's a lot of conjecture around this some say it's because she despised him dancing and god locked her womb and that's why she never had the child the bible does not say this it doesn't say it. anything that we think may or may not have happened are all speculations so what i think and i could be wrong because the bible doesn't say the reason what i think is david just did not bother to sleep with her again he had six wives anyway so that's why i think that he thought okay i'll teach you a lesson i won't let you have a child to carry on saul's name i decided not to sleep with her again because if she had a child that's saul's name still alive in in israel so maybe he wanted to teach her a lesson i don't know the bible doesn't say anyway that's michael the first of david's women we, sh we shall look at his other wife abigail we shall look at Bathsheba. you know so not much is said uh, about michael after this and uh, you should feel a bit sorry for her though she's just been tossed to and fro you know um her dad gave her to another man peltiel did she want to marry that man was she in love with him was it her wish we don't know she was taken away from Patel back to David. Did she want to leave her husband? Did she want to return to David? Was she forced to leave her husband? We don't know. But in those days, women didn't really have a say. They just went along with the flow. So this is Mikhail. Not much is said about her. Thank you so much. See you in the next book. We'll see you in Abigail. God bless you. Bye.